Right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm back. I'm not stopping. I'm back. So, if you don't know, I play hardcore, and every time I die, I have to do this exercise routine. Now I've done kettlebell, dumbbell, and I did um, boxing, which knocked me the fuck out, but I did it, uh, which means now I get to play it again. Now I only had to do kettlebell and dumbbells, for sure, but uh, I decided to stick with, um, to, to do one thing atop of it so I don't have to get demotivated next time. Um, so right now, I am rolling a Knight of Druid. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. For 10,000 years, the immortal Night Elves cultivated a Druidic society within the shadowed recesses of Ashenvale Forest. Yet recently, the catastrophic invasion of the Burning Legion shattered the tranquility of their ancient civilization. Led by the Arc Druid Malfurion Stormrage, and the priestess Tyranda Whisperwind, the mighty Night Elves rose to challenge the demonic onslaught. Though victorious, the Night Elves were forced to sacrifice their cherished immortality and watch their beloved forests burn. Seeking to regain their immortality, a number of wayward druids conspired to plant a special tree that would link their spirits to the eternal world. Despite Malfurion's warnings that nature would never bless such a selfish act, the druids planted the great tree Teldrassil off the stormy coasts of northern Kalimdor. Within the twilight boughs of the colossal tree, the wondrous city of Darnassus took root. However, the great tree was not consecrated with nature's blessing and soon fell prey to the corruption of the burning legion. Now the wildlife, and even the limbs of the great tree itself are tainted by a growing darkness. As one of the few night elves still left in the world, it is your sworn duty to defend Darnassus and the wild children of nature against the Legion's encroaching corruption. All right, let's see how this pans out. Um, I haven't played much through it, actually. So we'll just see how this goes. We may pop up a tune for the background because this is going to be some heavy duty work. Um, uh, There we go.
Alrighty. Oh, guys, I should tell you, I actually finished my entire homebrew D&D &D campaign. So the episode you are at is like two years back, but uh, today, the 19th of October, Good luck, uh, 2024, we actually had our last session. That's insane, man. I can't believe we've actually done it. And I'm so grateful that there are just people who would listen to my bullshit. You know, every time I'm like, oh, people don't listen to me, I just think of those four guys that are complete strangers, in, in essence, that just uh, were willing to spend three years creating these awesome narratives for their character. So yeah, feels really good. Feels awfully, I don't know, it's al almost strange. I feel a, a, a continuous search of relief, but... Also, I'm sort of, I'm sort of not really registering that it's over. Like I'm already planning the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. But logically, it it would have to, you know, it has to relax a little bit. I have to uh, probably I'll I'll only start running D and D after I've put all the episodes online because it's. Um, Ah, it's just nice content to have, I suppose. Um, for me, right? I just I like the idea of having all those episodes in the cloud. Um, I suppose it's nice banter. Like, there's a portion of your day where you want to just listen to dudes talk about the technicalities of a fireball. Ah, it's great content in a way so yeah I was watching uh, um, I was watching a video um, I'm not sure who made it he looks like a buffed Paul fucking Atreides from June anyway he went and um, got on Francis Ngannou's camp which um let me tell you, it's quite insane. Francis Ngannou is a uh, heavyweight boxing champion at this stage, which is why I became interested in him, because I box as well now. Um, but, um, yeah, that guy, his training is insane. You know what he does? So he does this um, circuit, which is grueling. Like, it's looking at it was even hard. Um, but actually what's happening is that he manages to, um, after he did the workout, he sort of has to fight five rounds against five different sparring partners. So the sparring partners can rest in between, but he has to keep on going, which is uh, where he gets his um, enormous stamina from. If you look at his fights, um, Pay attention to how long he actually stays in the fight. And that's one of the things where he has grown as a fighter, I think, is that it's not only his technique that has uh, evolved masterfully, but it's also his stamina. If you compare his fight with... Um, uh, what's his face? Look at the fight he had with Stipe Miocic. And then fast forward to uh, that Anthony Jackson guy, who I'm. Um, I haven't seen anything uh, of Anthony Jackson. I, I only. I thought he played in Greed, but that Creed, but that's someone else. So um, yeah, I'm fairly new to the whole boxing world. I thought the latest champ was Deontay Wilder, but apparently there are new kids on the block that I have to check out. Um, but. Uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting sport to watch. The only difficult thing for me right now is I can't really categorize what constitutes a great boxer. Like, if I look at UFC, my favorite fighters in UFC are um, explosive fighters. Like, Michael Chandler, for example, is a favorite of mine because he, he, he basically looks like plyometrics. Um, McGregor in his prime, of course, also... 
but um, I'm not sure what to look at in a uh, boxing champion, except for Mike Tyson, because he sort of follows his jabs, which um, to me looks really interesting, right? And uh, as I was doing my boxing training, by the way, I noticed, like, forget about a reason why to work out. You know, that's for everyone to figure out on their own. But once you're in the boxing gym, you start to really think how technical that shit is. You have to think about everything. I didn't know that. You have to think where your legs are. You have to think how your hips are turning. You have to think how your back are, is shifting for the whole punch to take effect. And then you also have to, like, keep your hands, like, next to your face, like those boomer shooter, uh, first-person shooters, right? Where you see the gun in the corner of your screen. That's sort of what you have to do with boxing as well. They have to be there all the time. All the time. So, yeah, I'm just um, really getting used to that. But um, it's, it's comparable to uh, kind of what I went through with um, MMA. All amateur, right? I, I'm, I'm, I wasn't good at all. But uh, recreatively, it's so fun. Because when you do grappling and you try a little bit of um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you start to realize, oh shit, the whole body is in play. And the same with boxing in many ways. It's your whole body that does a movement. The only difference is, of course, with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, there are many pathways to defeating uh, an enemy. Same for stand-up fighting. And with boxing, it's sort of like there's a framework upon which you can choose that can kind of work um so yeah that's that's what i'm really into now <laughs> although i gotta say i was so fueled with adrenaline my hands were shaking uh, after the sparring match but uh yeah that's just something i have to work on i guess i gotta stay relaxed but the weird thing is, right, when I did Wing Chun, it was pretty easy to stay relaxed because that whole fighting system is built on your cardio. But fucking boxing, it's so, so, so heavy. So you can only relax if you're strong. And that's what I'm at what I'm, what I'm at now. So, yeah, if you have any tips for me, by all means, share them. Would be great. Would be great. <clears throat> so yeah let's uh definitely let's keep this up in terms of pace the only thing that i want to develop now with boxing is uh apart from getting stronger the actual skill that i want to use is i want to sort of overwhelm my opponent with jabs so that they sort of hold their hand in front of them and then i want to aim for the plexus that's what I'm working at on right now. It's not helping because it's just, it's even difficult to keep looking at your opponent once they get punching. But yeah, that's where I'm at, really. And it is fun that, you know, particularly with this workout challenge that I'm doing for this uh, particular hardcore video, check the description if you want to know what I'm doing. Maybe you want to get some exercise as well or see if, if, if you can... I don't know, alter it for your specific situation. But it's really fun to just have these rigorous workouts if you die for World of Warcraft. Because I'm pretty strict with myself. If I die in World of Warcraft, relatively immediately I start working out the, the challenge that I have. And in order to be able to do those things, I actually work out through the week. So, and I'm, dude, if anything, like I'm not getting better at boxing per se. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely learning, but I'm not applying everything uh, the correct way. But compare, uh, co combine that with some kettlebell exercise and some dumbbell exercise, guys. I am losing weight. Jesus, it's uh, it's going quite quickly now. So uh, yeah, if you're interested in in that, try try and join up. <clears throat> And uh, also, like, 
because I'm doing the exercise, because I, uh, I had to go to the hospital a couple of times. I'm starting to review my, my physical body, sort of like the monster of Frankenstein. Like, here are parts, you can do this with this, that here are parts, you can do that with it. Like, I'm not squeamish anymore, I'm used to getting my blood uh, tested and shit like that. And it's actually kind of cool. Like, your whole body is, a, is like a network of, of, of different rule sets, essentially. Yeah. I was thinking, right, if you really want to get good at working out or boxing, essentially what you're trying to do is the same shit you're doing at end level uh, WoW Classic. If I want to kill Kalkazad, for example, um, which I haven't done on my main, leave a like if you want to see me uh, get to that shit. I'll have to contact the Spaniards again because I'm in their guild. Um, but I'm, I'm I'm sure they're up for it. But you know, if you want to kill Kalthasat, you got to get your world buffs in order. And in order to do that, you need to have your, you know, your DPS in order. Um, you need to know your potions. You need to know the tactics. There are all these things that need to be in order in order to get that goal, which makes the goal sort of worthwhile. It's uh, it's a very interesting way of quest designing. So, um, anyway, you could apply the same logic to boxing. Like, your diet has to be in order, your sleep has to be in order, everything has to be pitch perfect in order for you to reach that goal. And, like, maybe the exciting factor is diminished, but the conscientious factor, like, you know you have to do it, that is far stronger if you set up your goals like that. So, um, yeah, man, that's, uh, that's just sort of where I'm at right now. I'm so happy that I started as well, because I don't need to get pumped up to to get started. So, yeah, I think it's called momentum. Definitely not stopping. Uh, let me pop up another tune. Uh... Yeah, I'm feeling Cosmic Space Dungeon. Oi! Oh, for Dolma. Sorry. They, they are my own songs, but I have to click them on YouTube so they have this fucking commercial running through them. But it's my music, so I don't even have to do that at all. Thank you. 
All right. Let's uh, turn on the episode. Uh, I'm not sure because I died relatively quickly. So I'll just play it where I left off last time. Uh... Throw a will save, Rogar. Yeah, you cannot resist. Tell us how you're dancing with this student. Boy, um... <laughs> oh, I know exactly what's gonna happen here. Uh, so, Rogar starts to headbang, and just to, um, you know, do a bit of... Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but you know how some people at metal concerts just thrash around and throw around their fists and all that. Yeah. And he is going to uh, uh, do a wall of death for a mosh pit on the student. <laughs> <laughs> Corin and Destry, throw a perception check. You've seen this before. Think back. With Lawrence on the train. And we're talking like first through third level. Mm hmm. We were just wee babes. Yeah. You see the face of the student and the face of Rogar suddenly clinging together. Uh, should we do something about that, Corin? I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not jazzed about that. So when I see them starting to kind of mush together, just like mm, nope. And when Destry mentions what he's seeing too, I kind of want to encase Rogar in this this here sphere again and try to block that dude from potentially fusing with them. If I can. You know, I'll put the uh, the guy in the within the sphere. Oh, okay. Sure. Putting him within the sphere, not Rogar. So I have to throw a reflex save for him. Yeah. Sorry, I threw a 28. So, nimbly, the creature disposes of the dance, and during the mosh pit, they cling together, then they get out of each other, and then they cling together as well. And Rogar, you are not in control of what's happening, and you feel uh, that you're laughing. But every time you're laughing, there's a clickering and clackering of your jaw going down. And suddenly you feel that your jaw is melting in an elongated shape into the ground. And you disappear.
Let's take a little bio break. Be back in five minutes, yeah? And let's already throw initiative. I guess they're all... Okay, nope. Here we go. I presume that I do, will not need to throw initiative. Yeah, no, you do. Oh, alright. I can't seem to target my token, so uh, maybe so, you. Yeah, yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you can just do that for me, that'd be appreciated. That was the uh, that was the theatrical effect. Uh, here you go. Thanks. Yeah, and don't know what happened to our dog. That one's gone somewhere. Hmm. Hmm. I'll um. Did you throw initiative, Rogar? Ah, oh, there you go, man. I'll see you guys in five minutes, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Hey.
players well yes couldn't just up and leave now could we okay let's see do you have control of the dog Destry yes so it actually that 16.04 was for a dog and that's we have 17.5 but I guess it doesn't matter that much uh, let's just say that the dog is after you then. Is that okay? Sure. Alright, so, um... You're seeing what can only be described as an, an absolute, abhorrent, alien, mutated horror. It's like a, a female figure with no features other than a somewhat curvaceous body, but underneath you see what appears to be almost a tick-like body, but it's it's huge. Um, oh yeah, thank you, Rogar. Um, Rogar appears to have disappeared into this creature, and if you... The train, people started dancing there after they had taken some miasma, and then they converged and became this flesh warped blob which now appears before you once again do you remember by the way yeah yes how oh, could we have forgotten that yeah uh Destry, what are you doing so that thing has Right, it has no resemblance neither to Rogar nor to the student, because the student was a man, I assume. Exactly. No, no, it doesn't. Um, uh, you, you are free to also throw a perception check to reflect on what just happened. Yeah, in hindsight, you don't really know whether those people on the train actually merged into a flesh-like blob. Um, in the few off-time, downtime moments you've had, and the few um, past-time conversations you've had with Corin, you had the opportunity to discuss flesh warping with him. Um, both of you kind of concluded that that was something completely alien to the laws of physics. Um, and now that you've seen it again, Destry, you, you notice that this must be the absolute power of miasma. And perhaps this is the same thing that happened with all those mushrooms around you. Maybe it's something that came out of the septum outpath and something is swapped with it. But you're not sure. But no, you don't see Rogar or the student in there at all. Okay, uh... So Destry just looks over at Cora and says, What, well, Brainiac, you got a plan or do I just shoot the living crap out of that thing? Shooting it may kill Rogar. Yeah, but... Right. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of, but... Got a better idea? We might just need to get away and let it pass. Yeah. Okay. Can try that. 
What do the dragons do? Um, yeah, they're looking at the thing, and they notice that you're gone. Um, and then they're looking at Destry and Corin. Um, and they're saying something along the lines of... Um, we have, uh, we've had reports on what's happening here. Essentially, your friend is no longer here. But he can return if he wants to. If we destroy the thing, it, get, it gets uh, sent back. Or Rogar finds a way out of the place where he is himself. If you wish, we can aid you in combat. However, they say, if you wish us to aid you, then you must sign this contract. And they sort of print out a contract out of their shoulder gun. Well, I don't have time to read it, so, uh... <laughs> Yeah, let's well, just run. No time to read the fine print, I'm afraid. Yeah. You think we're faster than that thing? Maybe not faster. Or... Maybe not faster, but fast enough. Oh, I, that, I guess we start running. <laughs> yeah. Sh shoot, it, shoot as you move. We need to make distance so I wouldn't let this thing get close. The tactic like an Alra, I guess. Uh, so that's then 5. Uh, 15, 20. Uh, 30. Alright, we're getting into the weeds now, fellas. Let me first write down where we left off with the episode. It's 140. Might as well write that down in the episode as well. And then you and I are going to figure out if we can survive this cavern. I need an approach for the cavern. We're here to find the webwood egg. We will kick it in the face if there's a larva in there. We will remove the webwood spider leg from its carcass. Warm it up. And inhale the poisonous smoke that comes from it. So that we may find intricate kaleidoscopic visions of our druid.
It's there. There it is, fellas. Oh, I didn't take I didn't take that spider into account that's guarding it. Hope this works. I'm doing good damage. I'm gonna eat the eggs. It's a delicacy among the Kaldorai. These descendants from Troll's Sindelari kin. Oh, little mushrooms, guys. Are these mushrooms? Uh, not sure if they are. Oh shit, I thought the heart zone would be finished. Back. Ah! How does that happen? Don't think, don't think, don't think, don't think. Just do, just do, just do. What? Jump! I forgot how good the Night Elf uh, starting zone is. So much fun. There we go. What a successful day of adventuring that was, fellers. Let us return to the safety of our village. Hand in these quests. And that'll be the episode for today, I think. Nature Calls. Now, given that, you know, my players went beyond level 20... Oh, I checked, by the way. The recording you're listening to is from 2023, so I've got one year's worth of content, apart from the hardcore content that I'm making. So, uh, yeah. And I don't expect anything 
for it, of course. Like, I don't expect you to follow the story at all. Just bear in mind that the channel is completely what I want it to be. Oh, Jesus, no, no, no. We're not... No. Then... Dude, I don't want to look like this. I look like a scouting boy. What do I do? I think we can just head to Dolinar at this stage. Um, Terran Storm Grip atop Eldrassil Shadow Glen. Okay, let's do that then. Let's go back up. But yeah, just so you know, if you like what I'm doing, essentially what I'm trying to do is I make hardcore content, I play old D&D episodes, I play a little bit of my dungeon synth. The D&D episodes are really there just for nice background noise of dudes talking about, you know, D&D mechanics. It's uh, Starfinder that we're playing. And then the rest of the videos will actually be me playing games to extract ideas for the next big campaign. And for now, it seems to be that I'm stuck with um, some nice backlogging of Warhammer 40k. So I'm playing Rogue Trader of all things. Very cool. But I'm also playing other games, like every once in a while I'm playing Starfield, because I like it. Um, I'm playing... Um, I'm playing a lot of Elden Ring, Dark Souls, shit like that. I also tried to write a lit RPG, but that one is just if I want to, you know, get the the, the writing thing. It's actually kind of fun. I might pick that up again. Um, but that's sort of the order of the things that I'm do. So it's hardcore content or WoW content. With some dungeon synth in the background, some D and D in the background. Then I play some other games for my next campaign as inspiration. And for the once in a while, I'm playing some uh, from software games to talk with you about where I'm at with uh, lit RPGs. Uh, so yeah, and also of course I play a lot of games off stream because <laughs> uh, it's a hobby, you know. You, you, you shouldn't take these things too seriously. Um, and I think part of what makes... Uh, part of what people seem to like about these videos is that they, um, you know, they play once they are at work. Like, it's... There's not a lot going on, it's just chill. Um, I remember that name. Iveron. Hmm. Well, for now, our hero, our druid hero, who looks like a bodybuilder, but is dressed like a boy scout, is going to retire himself up to the beds. Oh, I thought there would be beds here. Where are the beds? This is an inn, isn't it? There's an inn, there's an inn, there's a Mary Mary and Hmm. Well, fair enough. I actually want him to be rested, so I am actually going to... Whoa, look at this quest. Let me read this for you. It's time for you to set out to seek your destiny, Pandartha. But before you are ready to set out into the world beyond our enchanted forests, there is much you must learn about our recent history. Much has changed with our people since the Battle of Mount Hyjal. Nordrasil lies a pale shadow of what it once was. Its power used to defeat Archimonde and drive back the Burning Legion. There's a task you must perform. Go to the Moonwell, 
North Valdrasil and return me a phial of its waters. That's kind of cool. Them mentioning Archimond, the Burning Legion, and Nordosil like in one go. Now, do we have the person that we're looking for here as well? Hmm. So yeah, her friend went to the place where the spiders were. I suppose I could try and find him. I think he's been eaten though. Let's try and find him then. In the episode a little bit. Well, I assume you take Tiamat with you? No, <laughs> I guess we start running. Uh, also, Destry, as you pass the young adult blue dragon, do you take a look at the contract he's printing out or do you completely ignore it? I just ignore it. Alright. I'm looking at that thing, trying to see what it's planning to do. Mm hmm. Corin, what are you doing? Well, I'll. give this thing a little. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of a hurt. Or I'll try to. Um, how many of those spells do I have? Let's see. Screw it. No time like the present, I guess. I'm gonna listen to the, the dragons. And, uh,. To see if I can't give a, an opening volley on this thing. Because if sending it back might bring Rogar back, we'll, uh, we'll see. But I cast Heat Leech. Man, that sucks on the damage. Okay. Through 27 on the reflex. So it will be 22 damage. Cold damage to it. So you cast Heat Leech all around him and um, you notice that it's it is suffering. Um, so you are hurting it quite badly, and the woman-like figure stands uh, erect and is sort of shouting, like, like a strange uh, owl-like sound, but it's howling as well. Um, so does that mean you, you allow the dragons to fight as well? No, I'm not, I'm not signing there. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to sign any long-ass contract without reading it. Okay. It's going to take take multi, probably take turns to read. Uh, yeah, actually, it does. It's like a... Oh, in, in, initiative order's all weird. Why did Destry go before me? I didn't even pay attention to that. Oh, I didn't pay attention to that as well. Huh, that's strange. 
Ah, I'm sorry about that. That's no biggie. Um, how about we continue with Rogar's turn? Okay, Rogar. Um, you wake up in a desolate looking place. Um, it's, uh, the first features that you notice is that it's raining. And you hear a lot of creatures, nocturnal creatures, in uh, sort of horrid-looking jungle. Um, you are inside a old gray ruin, and you see strange statues all over the place. Um, now, if you look up, you see... Bertheda, a couple of moons, and um, uh, um, some other uh, uh, places that you do recognize. But as you look at the sky, there's like a, a, a um, an iris high in the sky that gives a white circle and a black circle. Um, yet, as you look just in your own periphery, so not upward, but just a little bit down, you notice that it's entirely dark and that it's raining. Um, there's also bits of thunder. Um, all around you, you see corpses. And as you look closer, you notice that it's the corpse of multiple people that look like Corin, multiple people that look like Destri, multiple Isokis, multiple dogs, and knights as well, as well as wizards, and some dwarves. The far end of where you're standing, because you're like standing on a cliff about to enter this structure. You see a uh, statue with a sort of a gargoyle looking creature on it and his eyes are glowing purple. What do you do? Oh, that's a lot to take in. Mm. So these people that look like Corin and Destri would you say that they are identical, or is it that they are just wearing similar clothing and uniforms, or are they indeed just that very much uncanny alike? No, they seem to be clones. Identical. Now, as for the knights that you're seeing, they're all Destry, but in knight's armor. As for the wizards, you notice the image of Galdor. Now, there's an additional creature that you're seeing next to all the Isokis. The Isoki you don't really recognize, but you also see a lot of dead ravens and eagles all around the place. And they all appear to be the same person. Well, Rogar does remember the all the talk about the eagle that liberates. So he has a hunch, since this all seems to be related to the people that he's around in some sort of manner. Mm -hmm. But he's just walking through this barren place of corpses and been trying to take all this in and approaching the ruins with a gargoyle I guess the gargoyle has a voice within him and he asks as who shall you enter Corin or eagle drek or drell 
Marcus for Destry. I think Rogar was spawned with neither or no one or of, of all of those. I entered as me, me alone. The gargoyle looks at you and says, Ah, yes, you are Dragonkin. So as who do you enter? The Heralkacum Dragon? Or the Void Dragon? Or as Rogar? I think Rogar has to muse over that one a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, let's uh, get to your next turn to your answer, okay? Yeah, sounds good. So, upon damage to this creature, he suddenly does a sort of spell from the ground up. To appear. Destry, what are you doing? Hmm. I, I, no luck on the friend, so we're just gonna exit. And, uh, yeah, we'll have a look if we... Is that a corpse? No, right? No. We'll, we'll... I don't know. I don't know where the friend is. Maybe he's behind bushes somewhere? I remember a guy just hiding somewhere in plain sight over here. At any rate, this episode is over by now. But I can just shake the feeling of finding that guy. Ah. Uh -huh. Ah, oh, another druid, doing the Lord's work. Elun got you. Oh, he has the moonbeam. I want the moonbeam. Was he over here? Yeah, he is. Fuck. Alright. Well. Hello. Hi. Yes, will do. I look like gone from Hunter x Hunter. Oh, that's gonna get me some subscribers. <laughs> ah, what a nice day. A nice compact day of questing, fellers. I hope you're having a good one. I definitely had fun with this one. Um, I think I'm gonna chill out now. There's an anime I've been waiting, meaning to watch. It's called um, The Berserker Rain or something. It's it's relatively new. It's on Crunchyroll. It's like a isekai thingy. It looks very good. I might want to check it out. And I'm also watching The Shadow House, which is a very interesting anime. Reminds me a little bit of Violet Evergarden, if you like that anime. Uh, recommend that one. And then I have some movies that I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna start with... It's called Wizards. It's like a animation film from the 80s. 
I'm uh, gonna watch that one, and I have some very obscure, sort of, South Korean horror flicks about a photographer who, like an investigative journalist who finds a person who collects body parts or something. That sounds pretty cool. Now I have the Grand Master, which is sort of the prequel to Ip Man. And another horror no movie that I'm going to watch. So Yar, this is where I end our little episode. To Dolinar. Uh, yeah, okay. At least that'll get us rested. Wait, fuck, he's a Drew trainer, isn't he? He's not? Oh. That's so odd. I thought you were, man. Bet there's a Druid Trainer in Dolinar. You know what? I think Dolinar is a great way to end this. No, but there's a quest in between, isn't there? No, we're going to quit here. I think that's better. There we go. Let's enter the house. Well, let's at least tell her the guy sends his regards to Rania. Beautiful name. I'll do that next time. Alright, fellas. I had fun. See you next time. And uh, enjoy your... Uh, the rest of your uh, days. I hope you're in good health. See ya.